don't know how it is in your neck of the woods, but around here, it's late. No, not late in the evening, not late in the morning. It's just running a little bit behind. Greetings, good evening. How you doing? Welcome into Back to Basics. Live in a multiple location station from Studio One. I am the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane. Being joined by tag team partner, the inimitable Phil Stamper. What's up, brother? Would you like to say that word again? Inimitable? Inimitable. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Yes, I have decided that there are going to be, I just, I, I pick a word every once in a while and just remember the fact that I ate a thesaurus as a child. Oh. Hold the mustard. hit you a couple thousand times? No. Okay. No, not in the least. First off, thank you to everybody listening in this evening through beyondringside.com as well as the mobile app for Amazon, Android, and BlackBerry. We've got new sources online to everybody finding us over on Streama Radio. Thank you very much. Uh, for everybody finding us on Radio Shaker, thank you very much. Also, the TuneIn Radio app, still definitely up and viable. Uh, you stream playing around when they decide to get their IP addresses correct. And like I said, so many different ways to catch us live. It's getting that much crazier. And believe me when I say I am ultimately appreciative of every opportunity and every every one of the new affiliates coming on board. And from that vantage point, it's like, wow, coming out of the weekend. First off, Phil, hope you had a good weekend. Yes. <laughs> okay, there was some trepidation in that answer. <laughs> Why am I afraid? Yes. <laughs> kind of like you, the have every, you have every reason to be exactly as afraid as you think you should be. Been any good battle royals lately? Oh, I hate you. <laughs> Though I knew it was coming. <laughs> Every once in a while, the predictability factor is there. Now, first off, before we go into that, and like I said, I know that you've had a busy agenda. I'm going to go ahead and give you the opportunity for shameless plugs. What appearances have you got coming up this weekend? Well, this weekend is MCW Pro Wrestling's biggest event of the year, otherwise known as Shamrock Cup. This is a huge event, and not only is it already our largest event of the year, we have... WWE Hall of Famer Sting and legend Lex Luger also in attendance. Met Luger a few years back at a convention down here in the southeastern U.S. And, you know, very, very open and what is the word I'm looking at? Um, there goes that thesaurus again. I guess I didn't get that chapter. There you go. <laughs> uh, very easy to talk to. Very approachable is the word I was looking for. There you go. I knew you had it in you. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I just had to get, um, get to page 231, you know, the back half of the A's. And if everything is always functional, there's always a backside to the A. Just ask everybody over in the backside of Atlanta, whichever that side is this week. Um, but coming into it, so I know you're going to be appearing because you are general manager with MCW, right? Yes, sir. Um, and as a very special lead-in to this weekend... Uh, we will be having a Facebook Live Q&A with the general manager Wednesday night at 7.30. 7.30 Eastern, I assume? Yes, sir. <laughs> so this will be done from the desk of Phil Stamper, I'm assuming, or you're going to be on location? I will. Be, well, it'll be via the MCW Pro Wrestling Facebook page. Ah. Uh, and we'll be doing it through there, but it'll literally be from the desk of Phil Stamper. There you go. Um, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Speaking of from the desk of, I want to go and throw this one out there. Wrestling promoters, MMA promoters, boxing, uh, sporting event promoters, like I said, all the way through. It doesn't matter if it is, um, you know, semi-pro football, roller derby, lacrosse, all of the above. Um, we do draw the line at croquet. Croquet is not a sport because you can actually do that in a marital dispute and use the mallets as weapons. Been there before. There you go. And But if you've got an event coming up, I'm going to give you two email addresses. Now, Phil, of course, has been in charge of a great source of wrestling information, the calendar, which we have started to incorporate. I made good on the promise. Uh, the calendar page at beyondringside.com is back and active. No more 404 notices. Metro Atlanta. Uh, but from there... If you have, you can either, you can send them to beyondringside at gmail.com, but I'm going to go ahead and say, because of the fact that he does so much legwork as far as the calendar goes, stamper at wrestlereality.com, correct? Yes, sir. Now, 
what are the major things? Because I get people when I was running the calendar full time at B, um, for doc, for my dot com, I would get people send me the most obscure. I know that you've got rules and regs the way that you would prefer. You know, it's like pointers for people to send stuff, right? Well, the biggest thing for me is what is the what is the event? Who is running it? So is it CCW? Is it Ring of Honor? Who? Whatever the the title of your company is, where is it located? What time? And if you have a URL, where, what's the URL? Oh yeah, and the day. Um, other than that, other than making sure it is a legitimate independent wrestling promotion, that's all I need. Um, and I have gone I have gone through, um, after some feedback, I have eliminated a couple promotions that were sneaking in that were not legitimate promotions, <laughs> um, that were trying to operate as legitimate promotions that are no longer covered by the calendar. So I will catch you. Okay. If you're running a fantasy fed, don't even try it, please. If and I, the, the amount of people who, who bless them have, who have tried to say, can you please sponsor me? Can you put out wor- the word about my e-fed? And it's, you know, no offense. And, you know, when I was 15, 16, I didn't, I had an e-fed. Like, that's fine. That's great. But that's not the point of me doing this list. No, <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> Yet another thing, I, 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 I'm slowly almost feeling like I run out of time sometimes to do the indie list and do it really good justice. I don't know if I have the time to also make sure I'm promoting other people's effects. Yeah, that's why it's like, look, folks, with all due respect, I'm laying it out there and I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more direct and blunt. If you're running a live physical show that people can attend and watch wrestling <laughs> inside of a ring, that's what we're talking about. If it's fantasy rotisserie, please don't. That's With all. individuals who have also been appropriately and properly trained and have experience. Oh, no, you're asking a lot on that one, especially right. with some of the promoters we've known. Mm. Hey, Bubba, I'll put you in the ring this week if you don't mind working for two hot dogs of Coke and three bucks. Hey, three bucks, that's a raise for me, man. <laughs> Hi, Rick Diesel. I mean, what? I mean, oh, I- shoot. <laughs> I really didn't mean to say that name, so we're going to keep moving forward like it never happened. There you go. But I, ser- I, Let me back up. He's always taken care of me. He's always paid me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the accent was spot on, though. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it actually very much was. And I actually um, didn't know you knew him. <laughs> oh, very well. <laughs> Doesn't return I, phone calls for crap, but I know him. I feel, I feel really bad because he has never really done me wrong <laughs> oh no 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 like i said i've had a couple of interactions over the last couple of years with a uh, rick and like i said it's always been good back and forth but um you know i there was a time when and by the way rick how you doing good to see you glad to meet you a long time um <laughs> i'm so gonna be shot on and i don't mean like in wrestle i know but <laughs> okay then it, it, don't put the word on in that sentence please uh, uh. Uh-huh. there you go leave it alone let it go let it go let it go let it go and i really the only reason why that song sticks in my mind is because i have so many kids who want to still sing that in karaoke i'm not kidding once a month i will have this little girl come up and or different kids come up and go can i sing let it go i don't know can you <laughs> no seriously that's the way i respond I don't know, can you? As you should. As you should appropriately. <laughs> but coming back to it. No, um, yeah, because my interactions, and this is something that I'm very open about here on BR, um, all the stuff that I do. I have interactions with different people, with different promotions, as well as people who run their own promotion, uh, run their own um, radio shows and podcasts for those promotions. And Rick and I had had a couple of interactions a few years back. But like I said, it was all cool. But um, going on from there, you're coming back over. And now, is MCW the only place you're going to be this week? It is the only place I'm going to be this week, yes. Okay. Um, I was asked, it's like, am I going to be at Peach State this coming Saturday night? Unfortunately, no. Um, I will be the DJ for a wedding reception for Robin Teresa this coming Saturday, and I'm greatly looking forward to it. Um, I accept bookings for wedding receptions, birthday parties, all of the above through Full Range Entertainment. You can catch Full Range Entertainment at Yahoo.com. Uh, new phone number is on the way, and the website's being redesigned. So I'll leave that at that. Um, getting into real, getting into the real fun stuff for a minute, because I know you've got a lot to um, cover in a short amount of time, but I'm going to throw this one at you. Did you catch UFC 200 this past Saturday, or have you seen the replay? I have not. I missed it. 
Um, I was on the road myself for Grand Slam Wrestling, so I was I did not see it. I will assume that, however, you have heard all of the hyperbole, all the hype, and all the backlash coming out of it, considering that Lesnar had a very convincing win. Yes. First words that popped in my head the second Bruce Buffer said the words and the referee raised Rock's hand. Ain't no way he's going to job to Randy Orton at SummerSlam. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I keep thinking about that. Like, it, it, it would... It's such a weird thing to put them in a match together right now. At the same time, yeah, it's, it's going to get a lot of buzz, just the pairing of that match. I don't know if that's the right thing to do right now. I The main thing that wonder, that makes me wonder, you know, you got Orton who's been gone for a while, and he'd been dealing with injuries and various other things, and able to make his return... And his first match is going to be a per- coming off of a person who showed that he was a dynamo at the UFC pay-per-view. Um, folks, I know most of us are looking at speakers right now going, and I can only suspend disbelief so much. When Mark Hunt, who was the number 10 ranked heavyweight in the UFC, who even had to cut weight to get down below the line from super heavyweight to heavyweight, who is known as one of the best strikers and punchers in the game, who normally has a decent, keyword decent, folks, takedown defense, was dumped on his back three times in the first round by Lesnar, and once, I believe it was once or twice in the third round. Now, Hunt looked good in the second round. He looked like he was getting, getting his head back together. But Lesnar just looked crisp. There was very little wasted motion in the first round, very little in the third, and he made every... I mean, he looked like he had not even missed a second in that first and third round. And then to come off that performance in the UFC, and then you're going to put him with Randy Orton, who, once again, grand return... Somebody got to win, somebody got to lose, unless you can, unless you want to go ahead and join me right now and call a Broadway. <laughs> That's it. But, you know, when you get matches like that, when somebody's been out for a while and they make their return, regardless of the promotion, and lo and behold, the person that they're going to be paired up with, once again, has had a phenomenal outing. How do you, from your side of the coin, look at a situation like that? It's like, how far does your how, how far do you let your brain go? I mean, it it's it's just so tricky because it, it, taking it outside of the world of UFC, and I, I'm trying to say things nice, and my brain is not articulating things well. There is such a potential risk for injury in a professional wrestling match, just as there is in UFC. And and to come into SummerSlam so recently close to UFC 200, I hope Brock is ready to go. But then he's risking potential injury by ha- being in a match with, with Randy Orton. Mm, uh, you know, I don't know if this is good for that brand. This could potentially future harm him. Plus, he's been in intense training for UFC 200, and now he's going to flip that mindset and come into into SummerSlam. You know, what training and mindset is he going to be in for this? Because let's remember, when he first stepped back into the WWE, oh, 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 the, the ring was the last place he needed to be at that time. Right. No, I remember that very effectively. <laughs> it got ugly. <laughs> Because when you're coming out of the octagon back into the world of pro wrestling and your mind is used to going hit, hit hard, and you, like, you've got to be careful, especially when he was working with the uh, the Kimura as an intimidation hold. I mean, it's like, uh, this could be a problem. But shifting topics real quick, also going to go ahead and, um, I've got this one that's been bugging me ever for about a week, and I want to bounce it off of you. Okay. Who needs who more? John Cena needing Enzo and Cass or Enzo and Cass needing John Cena? Ooh. Well, let's let's face it, this is the continuing story of of how 
John Cena has been able to keep momentum over the last couple of years. So right now it's John Cena really needs it more because Enzo and Cass are fine without him. Um, though certainly they're going to get an, a nice, recognizable rub off of this. Now, do you think that Enzo and Cass need the Cena rub as more opposed to John Cena who still cannot keep a solid babyface pop from the, any crowd in this country? I mean, it's like it's almost a case of they're using Enzo and Cass to get John Cena that much more over. In that respect, yes. In, in that respect, it's going to help John. That's the part that scares me. Because we know what happens when you face John Cena. But lo and behold, normally when you align with John Cena, somebody's got a turn coming. Which has been speculated since since before they left NXT that some that either Enzo or Cass were gonna were gonna split from the other. That's the problem that I face because okay, it's kind of like when they originally split up the Dudley Boys a few years back. Yeah, um, it didn't work. They tried to put Devon as the New York Street Dusty Roads, and they tried, excuse me, a, B- a Bubba Ray as the uh, New York Street Dusty Roads, and you had uh, Devon, who was, you know, the minister. It's like, uh, kids, uh, it ain't working. Same thing that at TMA, TNA. You get a team that has a chemistry to them, and it's just really impossible to fathom the factor of, you know, okay. Granted, when the Rockers did it, Shawn Michaels was just one of those once-in-a-generation characters. Do you think, in your humble opinion, I'll go and voice mine right after you do, how well do you think Enzo and Cass would function as separate entities on the main roster right now? Say that again? If they split Enzo and Cass, who do you think would function better? Uh, See, this is where it gets tricky because Cass is a seven-foot guy who's in shape. Who can who can move in a ring? His talking, though, is not is not always horrible. It's definitely not great. Um, Enzo has the mouth. Enzo has a look. Enzo has a personality that carries. The problem is, he's a he's a smaller guy, though well built. That that WWE sometimes struggles with giving those those individuals good places. I think Cass would survive but he would struggle and limp along. That's the exact same that I'm thinking, to be honest with you, because, I mean, it's like a uh, case point scenario. You have people that function perfectly in teams. Remember the smoking guns? And then what happened with Billy? He worked better with the um, New Age Outlaws than he did as Mr. Ass or as Rockabilly. And in this circumstance, I think that if you take Enzo and Cass and break them up and give them, uh, make them separate entities, you're right. Because look what happens to the majority of the smaller guys. Evan Bourne, uber talented. What happened? Never got above mid-card. Neville, uh, never really got above mid-card before he got injured. The original botch Sin Cara, still never got higher up. I mean, you've got some guys who can break that ceiling. Yes, there is a glass ceiling. I will never say there's not because there are certain areas to there's rarefied air that certain individuals can make it to. And like I said, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, they were in that very rarefied air where they weren't the biggest dogs in the fight, but they had it and could pull it off. I don't know if Enzo or Cass individually has that it factor. Let me give you the perfect example. The perfect example. Primetime players. Darren Young and Titus O'Neil work well together. Separately, they haven't impressed me that much. And they're both very talented individuals. They're both great hands in ring. Agree or disagree, Phil? I I do agree. Um, my brain just went to a whole place of Bob Backlund. <laughs> Well, I can understand that completely because the fact that they've still been doing the let's make Darren Young great again is kind of like, okay, uh, Donald Backlund or Bob Trump or whatever the hell, I don't know. Um, (laughs) I know your time's limited this evening. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one because I know that you've got, um, there's a lot going on now. Um, I got the advance for Legacy on August 23rd, so I know we've got some time to play on that, but that's already looking like it's going to be a great lineup in place. Oh, absolutely. We have Mickey James coming in. 
there's going to be I'll stop I'll start with the the bottom and work my way up uh we have Travis Eric Gordon who I saw for the first time at the last legacy event um absolutely amazing if you have not had an opportunity to see him he's out of New England catch him oh my gosh uh, uh, amazing high flying talent I he, out of nowhere uh, a tremendously athletic individual he's going to face off against facade facade is a very unique innovative high flyer as well i'm expecting a lot from that match um chris dickinson now for those of you who don't know chris dickinson chris dickinson is one of the hardest hitters there is yeah just he, ask kimberly i was just about to go there infamous perhaps for for what he had what he did to uh kimberly throwing her basically all the way across a ring and folding her in half. Um, he'll be taking on Tony Deppin. Deppin is also a tremendously athletic individual who has been around for a good, a good a couple of years now, but really seems to have hit his stride in the last 10 months. Um, tremendously talented individual. And this is a very interesting mix of styles that I'm looking forward to. Uh, David Starr, uh, who I'm no stranger with, um, uh, CZW standout, now international star, former Rockstar Pro Heavyweight Champion, is taking on Anthony Henry, um, mostly known out of Georgia and and North Carolina. Uh, he was also in this year's CZW Best of the Best. Um, so these two will collide. Uh, in tag action, the tag champions, Bloodbound Warriors, take on Private Party. Private Party, a little younger a little bit less experience, and they're going to be going up against the Bloodbound Warriors. I'm really not sure what to expect from this matchup. Bloodbound Warriors, big guys, power guys, uh, I'm not quite sure what to expect. Um, in women's action, and this is a match I think a lot of people are going to be tremendously interested in, it's women's champion Veda Scott taking on international superstar Mickey James. I mean... I know a lot of people who are tremendously excited for that matchup alone. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me do me a favor. Let me jump in because sure. for those who have not really paid that much attention, number one, um, Veda Scott, part of the Women of Honor, part of Ring of Honor, has made appearances all around the country. And I'm going to sit back and say, with all due respect, and I have a lot for Veda. <laughs> I'd like to run away to Hawaii. Um, Seriously, Hawaii, great idea. I wasn't exactly on board the first time I saw her in ring, but she has learned the lessons and she has continued to progress and she has gotten so good inside the ring. Um, caught her live recently as well as, of course, on the Women of Honor show and Ring of Honor. Um, take your pick. It's interchangeable. It's still the same thing, but yet now totally different which I'm very appreciative to Ring of Honor for actually doing that. Not necessarily separating, but incorporating the women a lot more. Um, I watched her and Amber O'Neill go. Mm -hmm. And excellent match. And I can only imagine, because Mickey James is another of those world-class competitors, <laughs> and Veda Scott has developed into a world-class competitor. I, in, I really enjoy watching her work, and for her and Mickey to go at it one-on-one -on -one on, in August. Granted, the fact, remember, this is still over a month away, folks. Um, no. Oh, you have the out, outdated, the incorrect version. It's July 23rd. It is next weekend. Oh, thank you, because the one that you sent me says August 23rd. I, I know. I know. <laughs> so it is July 23rd. It is July 23rd. So you missed it the first time I said August, too. I did. Yeah, you did. But seriously, on July 23rd, definitely, if you get a chance to, Veda Scott, Mickey James, I have a guarantee for you that match will be worth the price of admission all alone by itself, not to mention everything that's going on that day. Absolutely. We also have, uh, now I need you to, I need everybody to bear with me for just a moment because this is a fans bring the leather strap lumberjack match. To, yes, fans can bring their own leather strap. If people are in the front row, they get the right to participate in the Lumberjack strap match. Fans can also buy an additional ticket if they're not sitting in the front row, so they can also be a part of this Lumberjack match between DJ Hyde. Ah, one of your favorite people in the whole wide world. And Laszlo Arpad. 
Phil is going to shoot me a little bit later. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. Uh, I'll borrow Rick's gun. Um, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is going to be brutal, and it's going to be as brutal as it sounds. Uh, I have been a part, correction, I was not in a match. I, I was at an event where there was a similar uh, leather strap lumberjack match. Right. Uh, put it this way. And I will say it involved one of the smartest one of the smartest people I know in wrestling, Steve Carino, going, you know what? We'll we'll hand pick who we want to be the the, the individual lumberjacks. And they picked this like probably the oldest person I've ever seen at a wrestling event ever. And they gave him a strap. Don't you think a guy who's probably ninety years old, who probably you know, who has generations of children after him, like he might be familiar with how to use a leather belt. I'm just saying I'm just saying, and this guy, whoever I can't even remember who was in the match way back when, pummeled the crap out of this guy. So I'm thinking, okay, so you have at least 40 people in the front row. You have extra people who can buy tickets. And they're all going to have leather straps. This is not a safe environment. They're going to get ugly. And then in the main event, Legacy Heavyweight Champion Eddie Smooth takes on Shinron and Leo Rush for the Le Legacy Heavyweight Championship. Wait a minute, let me see that one more time. Eddie Smooth, Leo Rush, and Shinron. Triple threat, single fall, right? Yes, sir. Very nice, very nice. July 23rd, Manheim, Pennsylvania. I cannot say enough about Leo Rush. He's such an awesome guy. And also to put the world in perspective about Shenron, very talented in-ring performer and legacy heavyweight champion, Eddie Smooth, he and of himself. Once again, this is going to be another one of those matches. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to use my favorite two words on this match. Don't blink. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be a very unique matchup, a very unique triple threat. But when you add so many of the independent variables that all three of these gentlemen have, it's completely going to be off the chart. And I don't know if we actually abolished that phrase for the rest of 2016, but I'm going to keep it one more time for this match. <laughs> you got off the chart, off the chain, off the meter, off the scale, off the reservation, which is where I've been kicked a hundred times. <clears throat> is, there a, is there a domestic problem we need to talk about? Is no. it time for a counseling session? No, I just tried to bring the roulette wheel back to the wigwam. Okay. There's your gambling reference for the minute. <laughs> How much are tickets, by the way? You knew I was going to do it. I actually forgot that you were going to do it. Um, go to LegacyWrestling.com and you can find out. <laughs> By the way, for the record, tickets are available. Hold on. Yes. Tickets are available through SummerStampede.BrownPaperTickets.com <laughs> or LegacyWrestling.com and click on tickets. Mm-hmm. 25 front row tickets while they last. 20 Front row tickets, 25 while they last. Ha. Kids five and under are free. Uh, let's see. I've got this part in front of me. Hold on. All front row ticket purchases, $25, include the right to participate in the Fans Bring the Leather Strap Lumberjack match between DJ Hyde and Laszlo Arpad. 50 additional tickets will be sold for $3 each online for, choose for people who choose to buy general admission, which will only be $12 online while they are available. Once again, pre-sale. Um, from that vantage point, it's going to be fun. There you go. I know how to click links. I actually found the page I was looking for. <laughs> Gotta love it when I can actually stall for time for you, huh? Sure. Ho, 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 ho. Hey, you're the, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> we both have the pension for doing that. It's called teamwork. <laughs> yes, we do. There you go. Um, although, although, uh -oh. Hold on, because I'm going to hold up before I go over to big time um, California, because I'm looking at the clock right now. We're 10 minutes before the top of the hour. How much um, how much time do you have to play with? We started a little bit late. Uh, Another 20 minutes. OK, we're good. We're going to go straight full scale shameless promotion mode, because this coming Saturday, July 16th, is a huge day for MCW Note. 
we do condense, it is MCW. Why? Because they've continued to grow. And mm-hmm. this coming Saturday is another reason why that growth has been exponential all the way across the board. As MCW Pro Wrestling presents, of course, the 2016 Shane Shamrock Cup and a whole lot more. Phil, I'll turn it to you. It's the 16th annual Shamrock Cup taking place 2016 on July 16th live from your favorite arena, MCW Arena, 1000 Joppa Farm Road in Joppa, Maryland. We have a very special meet and greet starting at 4 p.m. This is a little bit different of a time than we've had before. A 4 p.m. meet and greet start time with WWE Hall of Famer Sting, wrestling legend Lex Luger, and more. Again, that starts at 4 p.m. in Joppa, Maryland, with live action getting underway at 7.30. This year, our Shamrock Cup, we've already uh, shared some of our first-round matches. Uh, we already have announced WWE Cruiserweight Classic competitor Tomasa Ciampa. Uh, Ciampa, I always miss, I always do that. I always mispronounce it. Tomasa Ciampa uh, will be taking on Jason Kincaid. Oh, uh-huh. that is, I mean, that that's a match that's worth worth price of admission alone. Okay, and that's the that's the first match we've announced for Shamrock. Cup. Excuse me for a second. Mark out moment. Uh, huge fan of Ciampa. Met him, worked with him. Great in-ring talent. Love the guy. Um, the gift, Jason Kincaid. For those who had, uh, who saw Ring of Honor television this week, you saw him one-on-one with Donovan Dijak. He, he is amazing. I mean, there's a reason why he is on Ring of Honor television. Yeah, because remember, he was in the top prospect tournament recently. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Also competing in this year's Shamrock Cup, Sanjay Dutt versus Chuck Lennox. Of course, many people are very familiar with international superstar Sanjay Dutt. Chuck Lennox uh, is a Maryland guy. Chuck Lennox is known to a lot of us. Uh, He's recently had a couple of WWE tryouts, and he's turning a lot of heads. Uh, This is a guy that has, if, if I have to... We are not at the end of year, and I'm already warming up who I'm going to give my my most improved athlete of the year and i'm already eyeing up chuck lennox nice uh i already mentioned uh, travis gordon a little bit and my thoughts on him before uh travis gordon an amazing amazing talent out of new england he will be in a three-way dance with lsg and facade uh Ooh. one of these three men will be will be advancing in the shamrock cup Um, This is going to be hard-hitting. This is going to be a very fast-paced matchup. Um, It's going to be another blink-and-you-miss-it moment. Right. (laughs) Agreed. Definitely. Well, we ended up in a a unique situation. We ended up that both members of the tag team of the Dixon line entering into Shamrock Cup. And as tempers flare and mouths run, well, we decided, how about this? Let's have... The Dixon line, Rob Locke and Joe Keyes, who both got into Shamrock Cup. Let's have have them put uh, their money where their mouth is, so to speak. We'll have them team as a tag team up against two other competitors in the Shamrock Cup, Sean Carr and Brandon Scott. But whoever gets the pinfall or submission, the winner of the fall, will be the only person to advance. So it adds a little extra element. It's not your team advances, you advance. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that can lead to a lot of fun for the members of the Dixon line, I'm sure. But also Brandon Scott and Sean Carr, both both who are not norm for known for always keeping their temper in check. Very true. I understand that point. But when you've got a faction in play, when you've got an organization like the Dixon line, you know, of course, they're wanting to do uh, um, what's best for the bottom line for their group but they also have that built in yeah we deserve to be here you don't deserve to be here but guess what we're going to try to figure out which one of us deserves it more i think it's good you could probably see a meltdown between lock and keys this week <clears throat> this weekend you put yeah, that like that and, and for a reason didn't you <laughs> they're kind of on the edge of of sanity most days right just saying they're great talent they're tremendously tremendously great talents just they're, they they sort of just sit on the Dixon line sits on the edge of sanity is what I have to say. 
define sanity, please. I can't because it's pro wrestling, and who is left that is sane? Uh, I ain't normal. I ain't got a problem admitting it either. But something very special about Shamrock Cup, and we've done this a couple of times before. Everybody who does not advance in their first round in this first round match will have the opportunity to enter into a last chance battle royal for a spot in the Shamrock Cup finale. So if you are unable to move forward in your match, well, you have this other chance. And already the f- finale will include 2015 Shamrock Cup winner. We talked about him earlier, Leo Rush. Mm. So Leo could repeat what he did l- from last year and be back-to-back Shamrock Cup winners. And think about it, this will be his only match of the night. Meanwhile, somebody who could enter into this finale, well, whoever goes into the uh, first round losers battle royal, this will be their third match of the night. Ouch. Everybody else will have already had another previous match. So Leo has a very excellent opportunity to to be a back-to-back champion. Hmm. That's just amazing. And the funny part about this is I really appreciate the fa- and respect the fact that MCW is actually going to give a battle royal to the first round losers because that's going to be even more heated than the other situation because when you add to the moment <coughs> a desperation factor, it's like, I've got to go through you guys. Okay, guess what? I, I realize the world's standing against me right now, but you know something? Y'all gonna get out of my way. Mm-hmm. So I have a feeling it's gonna that's gonna lead to some very intriguing moments. That battle royal in and of itself. Continue. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. No, you're fine. I I absolutely agree with you. And that's just and more than the Shamrock Cup, we have a lot of other action already as well for this night. We have a tag... Excuse me, I'm losing my voice already. We're not even on Saturday yet. Uh, We have an MCW Tag Team Championship gauntlet match. Right. Between the champions, the Punk Rock All-Stars, Bruiser and Ryo, the Ectorage, who are the most recent former champions, and Guns for Hire. Both the Ectorage and Guns for Hire are managed by Kevin Eck. Cousin Clay and Bonacota, and and Black Wall Street's Napalm and Solo. I, I think the champions might be in for a rough night. Uh, depending on exactly where they start in this gauntlet. You're absolutely right, and that's what you'll have to wait and find out about on Saturday. He says with giddy glee. It's going to be an awesome match. Now, I understand that there is going to be a non-sanctioned street fight this coming Saturday in Joppa between the members of F.U. George Jenkins and Chris Swan and the Hellcats, Jimmy Stars and Sexy Steve, right? You're absolutely correct. I have some more information I'm going to share about that match tomorrow night on Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. on a live Facebook Q&A on MCW's Facebook page at facebook.com slash MCW Pro Wrestling. So please check that out Wednesday night at 7.30. Uh, this is a very contentious match for a number of reasons. The, the tension that has gone on between both of these teams now for months, the, the rivalry that FU started, the problems that they claim that they have had for years and years, the animosity now that they've, they've allowed to leak out of their system and gone after for no good reason the Hellcats. They attacked my assistant, Olivia, uh, I mean, to the point that Chris got arrested by a police officer who was in attendance at MCW, um, who was one of our security guards. And when I say that, like, there was a legitimate police report filed. Um, and I, I, at one point, I know I had it on my Facebook page. I know it was on MCW's page. Uh, it, I mean, damn, to borrow a word from Ron Simmons, also recently at MCW. Damn. Uh, this is going to be very contentious. Uh, we are bringing in extra security 
uh, because we want to look out for the safety of our fans. This is a street fight, and this is not sanctioned by MCW Pro Wrestling. Anything goes. What else we got coming up this Saturday night? MCW Women's Champion, the Punk Rock All-Stars, Brittany Blake, is challenged by Kennedy Brink. Nice. I think this is going to be absolutely tremendous. Brittany has made so many leaps and bounds in, in the last couple of years since I've known her. Uh, I'm so glad that she's a part of MCW. I'm so glad to see that she has been able to capitalize on her ability and show that ability. And now having become the MCW women's champion, I mean, that just speaks volume about the ability that she can bring to the ring. And Kennedy Brink is a tremendous superstar in her own right. And I am so looking forward to seeing these two go at it in the ring. And I must have blinked because I swear I thought, okay, I'm just going to shoot straight. I blinked for a second. Have you mentioned the MCW championship match? I have not yet. I was saving that for last. Bring it on, brother. <clears throat> for the MCW heavyweight championship, the champion, King McBride, will defend against Black Wall Street's Drolix. These two have been going at it behind the scenes, in the ring, at each other. Their friends have gone at each other. Last month, we had a contract signing in the ring between these two. It blew up. King McBride used his used the MCW Heavyweight Championship belt to smash against the head of Drolix, uh, leaving Drolix in a heap, which is not doing anything to calm down Drolix's temperament. This, it, I, I almost want to say, like, it, it, the street fight might be continuing in this heavyweight championship match. This is going to be intense. Uh, this is going to be tremendously heated. And one thing that King Bride usually has on his side is a numbers game. Right. King's Court. I mean, he's there typically with Kimberly and Ken Dixon. And the Dixon line. Well, he's with somebody who isn't known for being alone. Drolix has Black Wall Street. That's Chuck Lennox. That's Napalm. That's Solo. He is not going to be alone. So King McBride taking on Drolix, literally anything could happen. Lord. And that's all this Saturday in Joppa, right? That's all this Saturday in Joppa. Find out more at mcwprowrestling.com. And throughout this week, we are having very special Facebook Live conversations on our, on our Facebook page at MCW Pro Wrestling. Uh, tonight, actually, as we're speaking, um, Rock and Bowl has wrapped up with, a, with some very special live announcements. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday at 7.30, um, you can go ahead now and submit questions for me. And as the general manager, I'll be doing a live Q&A. And then on Thursday, the winner, Andy Weinberg, will be, have, will be live with some very special guests. Excellent. Excellent. Um, brain just went out. How can and of course, it takes place at your favorite arena on Saturday. <laughs> That's not where I was going, actually. I was going to sit back and say, what is the easy way to get tickets right now? You can go to mcwprowrestling.com. Uh, we also have a short, le- short link at bit.ly slash mcwtix. You can also call 888 888- Nine nine six four seven seven four. And I know that your time is short, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this one in your direction for a last call. What all's been on your brain that you'd like to cover before we get out of here? As much as I love Facebook, I'm ready. I want. I want to sue Mark Zuckerberg right now. What? I'm. I've been having technological problems, uh, so apparently I'm not able to post directly on any pages that are a like page. So beyond re- ringside. From the desk of Phil Stamper, what I have to do is go into post something on another page, and then share it from that other page. That's and weird. Then I can post it. No, that's weird because you should have been a, you're an admin on the Beyond Ringside fan page. I mean, I, I'm an admin on my own page, and I can't I can't post. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, so I'm trying to. So I'm very frustrated with the technological side of things not working well for me. Uh-huh. Um, I I I want to stab it with a toothpick. 
I will go into settings and see what the hell is going on on that one. But so I don't think it, I don't think it's on you. I think it's completely unfit because it's doing it on my personal one. It's doing it on yours. It was doing it on some others as I was trying to post things. Um, I know I can still post on on what well, as I do CCW social media. I can still post there because I use Hootsuite as an intermediary. Um, I keep so I'm forgetting sure about that program. It. One of these days I'm gonna get it back. <laughs> I enjoy it. It's a big help. Um. Yeah, you are still listed as an editor on the page. Just for su- for Sorry, some folks. reason, it's being difficult. And again, I don't think it's anything with you or, or the page. I think it has to do with, with Facebook. Yeah, um, of course. Typically, which, Facebook which crap on, is Facebook which crap. Which is a secondary thing. And I, I think I've said this before. I mean, Facebook is a great tool. It is not. It is not the only tool to promote. But it is a good tool tool that is out there that can exist to help connect to uh connect to your fans right now i just did a massive update to the indie wrestling calendar and and i've been a little bit behind lately so i finally have caught up uh the kind of in the way i i refresh the information on on that listing the amount of promotions that from last week to this week that I have gone to that last week had nothing about events or even this week I've seen, oh, wait a minute, the last thing you posted was two weeks ago about an event two weeks from now. So you're not hyping it. You're not talking about it. I only happen to go there because I have your link on record so I can go look for it. Are you still promoting the event? Like, what's going on? Right. The point of using social media is using social media. Social media. Put yourselves out there, create content, do it. I mean, Pro Wrestling Revolver that now I'm a part of, we were doing posts with, like, Bill Murray's face on it with, like, if he showed up this day, would would anybody believe you? Um, Shia LaBeouf is doing this. I don't know if he's still doing the hitchhiking thing, but he was hitchhiking across the country and tell, asking people to come pick him up. And so we were saying, hey, go pick up Shia LaBeouf and bring him to the event. Like, we were serious. Um, sorry. Uh, we were deadly, deadly serious. Like, use things creatively. There's always places for content. Right. Um, find it. Throw things on YouTube. Clips that to, to your merchandise. Use your platforms to sell each other. Um, you know, if you have sponsors, promote your sponsors, promote the merch that you have for sale, put something out there. And what kills me the most is I will search sometimes to say, okay, who has an event? Does anybody else have an event this weekend? I will ask people, does anybody else have an event this weekend? Nobody says anything else. Nobody adds anything on their Facebook page. And a week later I go back and there's pictures of their event that they just had this last weekend. And Mm -hmm. they only had eight people in the crowd. That... Kills me. Oh, it does me too. It really does. And actually, I'm in the process, folks. We're doing actually we're multitasking live on this episode of Back to Basics, um, because right now I'm actually updating the web. Uh, the uh, now before I hit upload on this, folks, I'm going to let everybody know. Um, the new version of the calendar is getting ready to go up in just a few minutes. I'll have it ready to load in just a couple. I'll probably do it during the break. The links are showing up as links now. Beyond Ringside Sports Radio, yours truly, Fast Eddie Lane and Phil Stamper, hold no responsibility for anything that any other company puts on their website. Got it? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. That, that's a very good point. I, and, and that's just it. Like I'm promoting what people are, are putting out. Excuse me. I'm putting out there what people are saying that they are promoting. Uh... And if I have for some reason not included something, it is not out of spite. I did not do it intentionally. I maybe just didn't see it. Right. Or didn't know your link was there. It is not personal. Thank you. If I have not included you, I apologize. Just send me the information so I can include you the next time. Also, um, for those who missed the early part of the, um, like I said, if you didn't ca- um, catch exactly what we were talking about earlier, your company name, preferably not just initials, put the entire name of the company. 
the state, the city, the venue, the address, the time. And if you have an event page or would like to post your, or give us your website link, that works perfectly. Those are the prerequisites. And once again, real wrestling companies only. Not rotisserie, not fantasy, not, uh uh-uh, no, stop, halt, cease, desist, whoa. Also, there is something that you can do that would actually help both Phil and myself on this one. If you have an outing that you're sending over that is a part of a weekly event that you do, it's not a one-off or it's like if you do every Wednesday night like Rockstar Pro. Rockstar Pro, there you go. (laughs) If you do every Friday like Pro South in Piedmont, Alabama, let us know. That way, we can put an asterisk going, okay, this is not a one-off. This is not just every first Saturday, every first and third, second and fourth. This is a weekly event. We can pass that information along to the people who see this calendar. So, once again, wrestling promoters, boxing, all of the above, everybody, if you're sending us information, let us know. If you're going to have a weekly situation, we can pass that information along. Because I will sit back and say this, for everybody who is catching us live, for everybody who catches us on replay through all of the different sources that are available, we've got some tremendous listeners all the way up and down the network, and they look for places to go and spend their hard-earned money. We're happy to try to help, but you got to give us the information for us to be able to help. Because we're not just helping the fans, we're helping you. We're not just helping you, we're helping the fans. It's a part of that circle of life. Right, Phil? Absolutely. Uh, 12 minutes after the hour on the live version of it. Um, Anything else you want to throw before we go to shameless plugs? Oh, by the way, for everybody listening live this evening, stick around because in just a few minutes, I'm going to be joined by the King of the Southeast. I do believe he is still the AIWF America's champion, the King of the Southeast, Francisco Chiazzo, in just a couple of minutes right here on Back to Basics. Sorry, I've been meaning to mention that. What up, Frankie? Um, But I'm going (laughs) to... We've been to make sure he's not hanging you over a top rope, so be careful. Uh, trust me, he knows people that have already slugged me with a steel chair. He knows I'm not taking that shot anymore. Good call. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> However, <laughs> go for it. Shameless plugs. This, this is just a random tangent. Random tangent. Go with it. I was, at, I was at Grand Slam this weekend, and the, the weirdest conversations you can sometimes have in the world of professional wrestling, like talking about the concussions you've had and how many of them have come from wrestling and how many of them haven't. And, and, and you know, because the last time I had a concussion, it was because I got knocked out during a promo. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, comparing the false tooth, that's the front tooth that somebody had to the back tooth that I have now. Like, like <laughs> the craziness of pro wrestling and the random injuries, the nerve damage that I have that runs from my shoulder to my elbow. Um, the, the MRI that I'm probably going to get in the next couple of weeks for my right knee, like the craziness that we will still put ourselves through. Um, and something I'm going to tell you about off air that could have resulted in a massive injury, but yet I was still willing to do it because it's wrestling. (laughs) I'm scared. It's so much fun all the time. All the time. Of course. But before I go and, and do something probably more damaging than I've already done uh, to my myself or my reputation. Uh, shameless plugs for me. You can come check me out on Instagram, on Twitter, on Snapchat at PS Phenom. Uh, and you can also go on Facebook to the desk of Phil Stamper. You changed the address? Yes, I changed the address. <laughs> so it's facebook.com slash desk of Phil Stamper. There you go. And you're going to be this weekend in Joppa. At Maryland Championship Wrestling at the MCW Arena 1000 Joppa Farm Road in Joppa, Maryland. And are you going to be with Legacy on the 23rd? I will be with Legacy on the 23rd at the Spooky Nook Sports Arena in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Sounds like a plan. Folks, we're going to head to the, um, logistically head to the um, top of the hour break. Phil, always a pleasure. Hang tight. We're gonna. I want to hear what you're going to say during the break. Going to be back on Back to Basics in just a few. Once again, the King of the Southeast, Francisco Chiazzo, right after this. This is Merciless Ray Mercer, Olympic gold medalist and board member of Find the Dream, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. <laughs> 
When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services we offer, call 533-HITS. That's 533-HITS. Or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. This is Dale the Demon Torborg, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on beyondringside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at youtube.com slash pottyhumor or subscribe at Potty Humor on iTunes and Stitcher today. This is Danny Cage from the World Famous Monster Factory and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Howdy friends, this is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all of upcoming show information and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern for Beyond Ringside ringside live on the beyond ringside radio network the two be determined show live wednesday nights nine central standard time join myself the oracle of ominous the wicked nemesis the grand design clive braddock and the magic city man rough fast Andy lane as we take you to the edge of uncensored yes we go uncensored so make sure you have your earmuffs Ask your parents, for those of you we know that are a little young, maybe under 18, but make sure if you have any heart conditions or any mental defects, please listen because they may take effect right here live every Wednesday night, 9 Central Standard Time, Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com. This is the seven-figure deal, Ace Rockwell, and as long as Wicked Nemesis isn't on the show, please listen. You're locked in to Beyond Ringside. What's up, everybody? It's Stan Grubb for Corner to Corner Wrestling Radio and the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Hey, join us every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as the triple threat of wrestling radio goes live every week, giving you their thoughts and opinions on the world of professional wrestling. Myself, Brian, and Rob, all live, all here for you. And as my good friend Rob would say, from corner to corner and pillar to post, we bring it to you every week at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, beyondringside.com and prowrestlingradio.net.